thank you everybody for joining us back here at Nevada Explorations channel. We're sitting here once again with President and Chief Executive Officer James. And James, it's been a little bit since I talked to you, but you guys had a big news release. Can we unpack that and break it down for people to understand it a little better? Yeah, you bet, Michael. Um, you know, it was our first big technical update in a while and uh, pretty important from our perspective was publishing our updated geologic model because that's what drives everything we do at the project. Every new piece of information gets draped on this model and, and our decisions are all based on this model. So part of the update was to publish this model. And um, as part of that, we renounced the results of our last couple drill holes. Um, the Both these holes are located at the south end of the project. And if we look at the exploration concept across the entire project, um, what we're looking at is a very favorable host rock. We've got a, a layer that's very receptive to gold that sits underneath another rock that's less receptive. It's a cap rock. And it basically slows or stops the percolation of mineral fluids up and into the host rock so it doesn't go past that and gets to build up and build up and build up into some grade is, is the exploration concept. Okay. And so at the south end of the project, the two holes that we drilled, um, one of them, unfortunately, didn't get through the cap rock. Um, it encountered lots of cracks and lots of things that suggest that what's at depth is good. We've had to wait until another drill rig can come to get back in, get through the cap rock so we can now drill the favorable unit. So uh, we're still planning to do that. Um, and all the little suggestions of what we saw in the, in the cracks and such up above look good. The other hole that we drilled was up against a big intrusive, a big granite. Um, it kind of, if you can imagine a lava lamp and a big, a big blob of granite came up and into our perspective rocks. And, and that's really good because um, it makes the rocks more brittle. Um, and then when the fractures come later, it breaks them rocks up even better, that these brittle rocks break more, even more fluids can go into it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a danger of being too closely intrusive and that the rocks become so brittle then they're not broken. And so you wanna be just the right distance off the intrusive, there's sort of a sweet spot. And what we found is we ended up drilling too close to the intrusive, really. It was, it was too cooked relative to the amount of breaking there had been to permit enough fluid flow there to be uh, much action there. So what we had was a hole that says we need to get a little further off the intrusive, which puts us right back to where we had that hole that we're still working on. So everything looks good for that hole that we're going to go back and finish, mm -hmm. uh, but the hole right up to the intrusive was too close. So um, good in terms of confirming what we know about the project in terms of the geology, um, but a bit disappointing in terms of exactly what we saw in that hole. Yeah, fair enough, James. Well, I appreciate you coming on and helping elaborate and explain a lot of this. And we really hope you guys continue to ask questions like this. We'll answer them here. That way everybody can get those answers. But James, it sounds like there was a lot of learning done, a lot of a learning experience there. So what have you learned for the next few holes, do you think, from here? Yeah, well, the fact that the 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 structural fracture features within this not so good cap rock are seeing lots of mineral fluids. We're seeing up to a couple tenths of a PPM gold numbers and some point X percent arsenic numbers, some really good juice in these cracks. Um, it goes along with a lot of the other things we've seen in the project that, that let us know how important these structural features were in bringing the mineral fluids up into our host rocks. And what we're doing now is moving back to the north end of the project um, because that's an area of the project where our host rocks come right up to the base of the gravel. We, we drill through the gravels and then through very little cover material and we're right into our host rocks. And, and ultimately these drill holes are quite expensive and take a long time. And so in an effort to reduce our need to drill super deep holes and also be in a position to provide quicker news flow for all of our stakeholders, we're, we're, we're transitioning back to a piece of the part of the project where we can use much shorter drill holes to get results much faster and, and much cheaper. So the, the next series of holes of the project that we're laying out here are all the north end of the project. And, um, and, and that's what we're focused on right now. Perfect, James. Well, again, thank you for walking us through and giving your insight and letting us know what's coming next. I kind of wanted to cap off today reading an article when I'm when I'm digging into the industry, there was something I'd read from Kitco saying unloved and overlooked gold mining stocks could be the ultimate contrarian play. Anybody watching this, I'm sure you're familiar with anything in the gold industry right now is underperforming pretty much everything in the market, including gold as a commodity itself. And um, James, as you and I were talking off, off camera, interest in different industries, waxes and wanes across time. And there's really nothing you can do about that. But what they're referring to when they say the ultimate contrarian play 
is it isn't when interest is at an all time high that potential gains can be made. At, you know, the best gains can be made. Most gains are made when you get into things when they are sitting in that contrarian status, when everyone else is looking in another direction. Do you have any insight you'd like to add on that, James? Yeah. Um, if you look at a project like ours here at South Grass Valley or, or any other serious project, the timelines to advance these projects are measured in, in years to, to, you know, up to a decade. Mm -hmm. And the, the capital markets are very cyclical. You know, something's hot, something's cold. And often what you find is projects that have seen a lot of work over a really long period of time that require just a little bit more capital get over the hump that fall right at the point where the market interest is the lowest. And if you look at many of the people that have you know, made their careers in this industry, um, you know, the Rick Rules and the Ross Bees, they'll all say that they're, you know, what the thing that they did better than everyone else is, is likely time. And so picking projects that where the groundwork was done, um, where the path was in place, and they were able to come in and put up the final few dollars, if you will, to get it to the point where a project can be re-rated. And so, uh, yeah, finding opportunities when the sector is not in favor is uh, has been a hugely successful strategy for a number of big investors in this space. And yeah, and, and it's uh, it's something we all need to look at. All right, James. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And please have a wonderful day. Thanks, Michael.